market structure. Market structure, this will refer to the structure in files on how market is made up in terms of the number of firms, nature of the product, entry, information, corrosions, firms control over the price of the product, demand curve for the firm's product, and the long-run economic profit. So actual, uh, depending on a such kind of a market structure, it can be com perfect competitive, it can be monopole, it can be all geopolitic. So actual, the market structure covers with these all features, include the number of firms, nature of the product, entry, formation, corrosions, firms control over the price of the product and so forth. So markets are classified into market structure according to the conditions, characteristics or behavior of the market. Also according to the degree of competition which exists in the market. So the market structure can be divided into the following. We have the perfect competition, we call it PCM. We have monopoly. We have also the imperfect competition or duopoly or monopolistic competitions where it covers all these kind of uh, market structure, duopoly, monopolistic competitions. But also we have uh, what is known as monopoly. So from this kind of a market structure, now it is possible now we identify the first kind of a market that is perfect competitive market, a market that is catalyzed with many sellers and many buyers. So one among the features of PCM, perfect competitive market, that there must be a large number of buyers and sellers. So to prevent a single buyer or seller from influencing the price of a commodity, so if there are so many buyers, then one individual's buyer can influence the price. Because consumers want to buy at a low price, then the seller can refuse to sell goods to, uh, to him or her. So, so for that kind now, we have also another feature that is homogeneity. And a PCM market, the product sold by different sellers in a perfect competitive market must be uniform. Or in another way, must be identical or similar in terms of color, size weight and taste as well so if the products are different than the seller then uh, if the products are different now the sellers may change different place hence now the market will not exist at all another feature under pcm is there is a free entry and exit there must be no restriction of the entry or exit of the firms in and out of the industries respectively also, all the firms in the industry should earn just a normal profit. Absence of transport cost. Under a perfect competitive market, firms do not incur transport cost. Another feature is perfect knowledge. Buyers and sellers in a perfect competitive market has a perfect knowledge. So what is actually assumed under PCM is that buyers and sellers in the perfect competitive market has a, a actual the full information about the market, the issue of price and so forth. But also another feature is there is a perfect mobility of factors. Factors of production such as labor capital are free to move from one firm to another depending on the transfer earning. In this case now the goods can be moved from those areas where there is a greater demand for them. So similar labor and capital can be moved to those places where they are more productive. Also there is no government restrictions under PCMs or interactions and from the so this show for, there is no government restriction on interventions in the terms of in terms of uh, maybe tariff subsidies and etc. So so consumers or buyers aim at utility maximization, price is constant or at all levels for output, because firms a firm under perfect market is a price taker. Therefore now a perfect competitive market faces a perfect elastic demand, thus a firm can sell can sell any quantity at a given price. So this can be demonstrated graphically like this. So as you can observe, we have the price in the uh, vertical axis. We have the price 1 and we have 0 over there. But also we have 
the lines that cut across the P1 to 0 to the line of our x-axis. So there we have what is known as the, the quantity of the output. So as you can observe now, uh, when you try to show that kind of uh, characteristics, here we have the quantity 1, we have the quantity 2, and we have the quantity 3. So this is the demand curve, this is the demand curve, D which represents of the average revenue that is equal to marginal revenue. So there, the vertical axis represent price, Tanzania shillings, and the x axis represent of the quantity. So this feature here shows the demand curve of a perfect competitive market. So we have the demand curve with perfect competitive market of a firm shows like that one. So as you can observe there, the lines that is a horizontal axis going from the average revenue, which is equal to margin revenue, represent at the constant. P1 is constant while the quantity are changing. So the price is constant while the quantity are changing from quantity 1 to quantity 2 and from quantity 2 to quantity 3. So we may try to prove this kind of a scenario of the average revenue is equal to marginal revenue. How do we prove that the price is equal to average revenue and it is equal to marginal revenue? So we can perform this, we can prove this mathematically. Let's see how now we can prove this the price which is equal to average revenue and is equal to marginal revenue. And something to note is that so since price is equal to average revenue is equal to marginal revenue so the total revenue is equal to price times Q so the average revenue normal is given by taking the total revenue over Q. So price times quantity when Q, Q and are over, when you divide by price. So average revenue is equal to price. Now let's come from the margin revenue versus price. The average margin revenue is given by taking the change of total revenue over change of output whereby the change of total revenue is given by taking price times quantity. So when you divide by change of Q both sides, it remains out major revenue is equal to change of price. So marginal revenue will be equal to change of price is equal to marginal revenue. So now since the price is constant and a perfect uh, competitive market, so the change in the total revenue is equal to uh, so th this means that the change in the total revenue is caused by the change of output by equals taking margin revenue which is equal to price p that is constant that is equal to change of q over change of q so since now the average revenue is equal to price and margin revenue is equal to price So for that case now, therefore, we may conclude for a simple case that marginal revenue is equal to price and the price is equal to average revenue. As you can observe, So that is a simple uh, a simple proof that you have done that they show that the marginal revenue is equal to price that is constant which is equal to 
which is equal to average revenue. So it's simple to know, you should understand uh, on how we can calculate the marginal revenue. That is change of total revenue over change of Q. And in the same way, you need to understand the concept clearly about the total revenue. So the change of price is constant, as you can observe. So the marginal revenue is equal to the change of Q over change of, uh, is equal to the change of Q, whereby the change of P that is constant. So this will mean that it will be equal to change of Q over change of Q that is constant, that when you divide, it may not, the average revenue is equal to price, and marginal revenue is equal to average revenue. So that is how it is. Thank you.